Bibles with you tonight. Please turn with me to the book of Habakkuk, chapter number 3. Habakkuk, chapter number 3. Go all the way to Malachi. That's the last book in the Old Testament. Turn back to, what is it? Oh, goodness. What did it say? Malachi, Zechariah, Haggai, Zephaniah, Habakkuk. I believe that's right. Am I right on that? Been a long time since elementary. Let's see. Yeah, praise the Lord. If you have a Schofield, page 955. That's easy for me. You can get that. The back of chapter number 3. Shoots him, leaves him for dead wounds 
relationship that kills that little six-month-old dog. The news about this guy trying to sexually solicit a young boy at the wall. We're living in sick days. We're living in sad days. We're living in dark days. We're living in discouraging days. We're living in depressing days. And we might get tired of in the way, but praise God, I'm still not getting tired of the way. Amen. I don't ever want to get out of the way of God. The only time I want to get out of God's way is when God's wanting to work in my life. There's a good song, Lord, keep me in your will.
Now Habakkuk never said, again it says, that I might rest in the day of trouble. He, he, he didn't say that I might quit in the day of trouble. He didn't say that I might throw in the towel in the day of trouble. He said that I might find rest in the day of trouble. You know, in Galatians chapter number 6 and verse 9, uh, let me turn, let me, let me just read that. Galatians 6 verse 9 says, Let us not be weary and well do. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 58. Let me read that to you. It says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain. And you know, I've misinterpreted this scripture for a long, long time. But over there in Isaiah chapter number 40 at verse 31, the Bible says, But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Now I've always thought and I've always preached that they that wait upon the Lord mean and wait for the coming of the Lord. That's not what the Scripture means. It means they that serve the Lord. In the context there, in the translation wait there, means as a
this question. I, I thought about this. If if you if you were on the sidewalk in a busy city and you saw somebody out in the middle of the road and a tractor trailer or a bus was in their way and they didn't see it coming and they weren't paying attention and, and their, their ultimate demise is death, you'd do everything you can to save that person. I bet if, if you're a human being. And you've seen that train, you've seen that bus, you've seen that. I mean, I would. That person's going to get hit by a train. I'm going to try to jump and, and to their safety. If you saw somebody drown, how many of you, if you sat in the lake and saw somebody up the wall talking later, would try to go in and help them? But we know people going to hell and they don't even do it. They don't want to do anything. They come to the rescue. Habakkuk says, I'm aware of some things. He says, I'm the Lord. I look at this, I look at, I look at sin of our nation, sin of people's lives and all that, and it bugs me. It annoys me. It troubles me. But Habakkuk still has assurance. Even though he's aware and even though he's annoyed, he still, uh, 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 Brother G, has assurance. This is what God says. He says, Behold ye among the heathen and regard one and marvelously for I will work the work in your days which you will not believe, though it be told you. God said to Habakkuk, you can be aware of some stuff. He said, it's, he said, Habakkuk, what you're aware of, don't take me by surprise. Habakkuk, what you see, I see. What you experience, I know all about. And he says, no, even though it annoys you, says it's annoying me from the beginning. Remember Genesis 6, verse 5, said that God saw the imagination of man's heart, that it was wicked continually. God said, from the beginning of time, I've been watching this stuff. And it troubles me and it grieves me in my heart. He says, but I'm going to work and work. Listen, I don't know what's going to happen in this world. I don't know what we're going to face, but Brother Bill, praise God, I still believe in these last days, Brother Greg, that He's still going to work. But in chapter number two, I see the book of Habakkuk. The Lord speaks to him and says, I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and go watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I'm reproved. And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision, make it plain upon tables that you may run that read. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. But at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright to him, but the judge shall live by faith. Without faith, the Bible says in Hebrews 11, 6, without faith it is impossible to please God. I got to think about this. You know, the Bible says that every man is given a measure of faith. Brother Floyd, have you ever been at the place where you just you felt like you had all that faith and then you got it, it's brought down to that? I've been there since Alice where I felt like I had all this faith and it seems like I have this. And it seems like Sister Thelma that I went from all this joy to a little bit of joy. And Sister Betty, all this peace to a little bit of peace. And Sister Jeanette, a whole bunch of assurance to just a little bit of assurance. But I realize that you may say, well, preacher, all I've got is a little bit. Hey, with God, a little bit's a whole lot. Little is much when God is in it. Praise God. He don't need a whole lot to work with. He specializes. Praise God. When we're down to nothing, God's up to something. Praise God. And so, Habakkuk, he has this book. He's got a burden, but he has a book. The book is a relevant book. You know, the Word of God was good enough for my mama and papa. It's good for my mama, my daddy. The Word of God's good enough for me. 
It's still relevant. We can still apply it to today's time. And not only is it a relevant book, but praise God, it's a revealing book. The Word of God will reveal some things to us. But then also, it is a rewarding book. And I'm going to tell you this. You know, sometimes, have you ever been reading something, Sister Patty, and it convicted you? Or Sister Donna, have you ever been reading something and it oh, I stepped on your toes? I've read stuff before, and Brother Jim, it's hit me, and I've gone, oh, oh. And it's kind of been hard, Sister Kim, to chew on it. It's kind of hard to swallow it. It's kind of hard to digest. You know, Mom and Dad used to tell me things, you know, oh, it's, oh, we ain't saving this to be made, we're telling me for y'all good. It's kind of like that. You know, weapon. Well, it's going to hurt me more than it hurts you. But, um, I ain't never seen them cry when I got one. But I remember the first time I had to give Ashley. Just a little old. She was about two and a half and she was already learning assassins. She looked at mom and said, I ain't got that. I went up and said, one little one here, and you said, I ain't got that. And I said, what on the ball boy she cried. She came up to me, I was getting ready to get a shower. I had my lounge and bridges on my t-shirt. She came up and said, Dad, I saw her. And I said, that's all right, honey. Just, just go on. I got the shower and boo. <laughs> it hurt me more than it hurt her. You know, there's the thing. I remember the first time Mamma probably put next squash. Brother Jack, as a young boy, I didn't want to eat, I didn't want to eat anything. Sister Pat said it had to sound like it's already been stepped on. Squash. Mamma said, I'm going to fix squash. I ain't eating. It's already been stepped on. She said, Oh, you'll like it when I make it. The boy, she cooked that with them onions and zucchini. Right now, I'll eat it. I'll eat it raw. I'll eat it in salads. I'll eat it fried. I'll eat it grilled. I'll eat it pork. I'll eat it shish kebabs. Right? I fired a taste for it. I remember the first time Mamma cooked collard greens. I came in the house. I never forget. Sister Jackie, this is how it was. Two big old horse tubs out there in the yard. Mamma would take in greens. She washed. How many of those don't know? But she washed them on that grit and sand and whatever be at the bottom that she put it in this tub. She'd wash them, get all the bugs off and check everything and then she'd bring it over here. And I remember the first time Brother Bill, she cooked that stuff down. I walked in the house and I thought, what is that? Something's dying. And, 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 and Brother Terry, she put it on my plate and it looked like it already been eaten. It looked like a jar in the back. I mean, it, it looked like the water in the back had been spit out on my plate. And I said, I ain't eating that. Papa said, boy, you are good. And I said, no, I ain't. He said, we grew it. God blessed us. Great. Man, I was working hard. She's cooked it. You ain't going to leave this table to eat. I said, I'll just sit here. He said, me and your man, I was making homemade ice cream. We ain't getting nothing to eat. I said, bring it on. <laughs> and I took the bite and I thought, I just don't know. And then Papa took that dinner. Put it on a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. He said, take your bite of that. It didn't make you smack a neighbor within a 50 mile radius. It's so good. And I ate that up. And I mean, I love it. Now, I've got collars growing in my backyard right now. And mustard greens, kale, and lettuce. I like all of them. Crookneck squash, straight squash, zucchini, acorn squash. I like to cut acorn squash in the middle. Bake it in an oven, take it out, and load the butter and brown sugar to it. I'm telling you, it'll pray, it'll make you shake. But there are some things I've seen mom make stuff through the years. I've seen, I, I've been at church dinners and something's been brought. I've been, Brother Jack, can we testify? How many times have we been invited places in our pastor and, and somebody said, Preacher, you don't like this and you, you don't even want to know what is that? I mean, you know, when Sister Alicia makes macaroni salad, I know that's macaroni salad. When somebody makes fried chicken, I know it's fried. But there's been some stuff put in front of me, and I thought, I don't know. I think I ran over that coming down the road. 
But I've never turned, I've always ate and I've always enjoyed it. But the Word of God, sometimes it's hard to, it's hard to take it in. It's hard to digest. It's hard to, but, but if we chew on it, it's relevant, it's revealing, it's rewarding, and it'll bless us. And so Habakkuk, he's got a burden and he's got a book, but then number three, last, he's got a blessing. Habakkuk hears from God, from God he sees all these things. Now, he says, when I heard my belly tremble, my lips quivered at the voice rottenness entered in my bones. I trembled in myself that I might find rest in them trouble when he cometh up and the people. He will invade them with his troops. Now, help, help me in this. Let's do class participation. I'm going to read these of you and I'm going to say positive or negative and you tell them, okay? Although the fig tree shall not blossom, positive or negative. Although the fig tree shall not blossom, positive or negative. Neither shall fruit be in the vines, positive or negative. And the labor of the olive shall fail, positive or negative. And the field shall yield no meat, positive or negative. And the flock shall be cut off from the fold, positive or negative. And there shall be no herd in the stalls, positive or negative. All this negativity. Habakkuk sees all this negativity yet in the midst of sinkholes and swallowed up jeeps and homes and bicycles, in the midst of sickness, in the midst of insurance craziness in the world today, and medication craziness in the, and health care and all that, in the midst of psychopaths out in the world and murders and robbings and all I will joy in the God of my salvation. The blessing is that He's got to say Everything can fall apart tomorrow in our lives, but we still got to say We might get to the end of our road tomorrow, but He's still a Savior and He's still the God of our salvation. And then, verse 19 says, The Lord God is my strength. The blessing is He's a God of strength and He's a God of stability. He said, I've got a burden. He looked to the book with the blessing. We might, can you imagine it just getting worse and getting darker and getting harder? It's going to. The Bible says in the last day it's going to wax worse and worse. The love of many shall wax cold and all this. But I'm glad that I'm still blessed. You say, preacher, oh, am I really blessed? Don and I got to washing the dishes last night. What a Monday night whenever it was. We, could. we had some dishes from the previous morning or Monday morning getting up fixing the girls and I got some of them then I had to leave to get all of them so we come home and got those dishes out of the way then we cooked and had more dishes and I thought boy I've got three loads of packs I've got them on three loads of lawn we've got clothes and work clothes and kids clothes and packs I've got to get out in the garden I've got to weed I've got to take them I've got to Fertilizer. We've got to put the kids' baths. We've got to put toys in. We've got to do all this stuff. I seen those dishes and I started crying. I said, Praise the Lord for dishes. God's blessed us with the same to wash the dishes and a dishwasher. But we still wash them in the And then I can look in them cupboards. Go to the refrigerator and freeze for tons of food. <coughs> Walk down the hallway of the house and start seeing pictures of the girls on the wall. Legs. Worked outside a little bit. Made a couple of visits. Got outside this afternoon trying to do a little bit. 
Okay, so I couldn't get to it after church tonight. Roasted, hot, went inside. It was cold in the house. Should the Lord tarry and we make it to December, it might get down to the outside and be warm in the house. Had a good bed to sleep in last night. God's blessed us. Closet's full of clothes. Sister Joey and I don't say this closely, we're just trying to make a point of how God plays. The New Hope Christian Church over at Vine Labs is taking trailers over the home. And we took a ton of the girls' clothes and a ton of Don's clothes and a ton of my clothes. I count 40 some shirts of mine. I mean, goodness gracious, I did 15, 40 some shirts. Good shirt, some still had tags on this field. And still got three clothes. And, and so much clothes, I go out to the garage and I've got some hanging in the garage that I can't fit in. And we got better clothes stored up in the attic. And come wintertime, we'll have to store in the streets. Because God has blessed us, He has fooled us. We're rotten. God's blessed us. So everything may be horrible outside this world, but we're still blessed. We still have a Savior that loves us. We still have salvation. And I'm glad that we can still find rest in a day of trouble. With every head bowed, every eye closed. Lord, we love you. We thank you, Lord, that even in difficult times, even in times of social unrest, emotional unrest, and religious unrest in this world. I'm glad that we can still find rest in you. I don't know, as we've sung here several times, Lord, we don't know what tomorrow holds, but we know who holds tomorrow. And Lord, while the government is resting on one shoulder, Isaiah 9-6, we can rest our head on the other shoulder. Lord, I'm glad we can find peace, hope, and safety, and assurance, and strength, and stability in them. Lord, we love you. We thank you, Father. For the simple truths that we've seen, we look back, we can take and apply our lives and lean from them. Yes, in Jesus' name. Amen.